Rugova is a cookie with aspirations. It's a cookie that wants to be a pastry when it grows up. It's flaky on the outside, moist and gooey on the inside. It's just divine. For years, I've experimented with every filling possible. Fig jam, cherry jam, raspberry jam, chocolate, cinnamon. They are all good, but none of them come close to the apricot one. No matter who is visiting my house or where I bring these pastries, the apricot one is always the first one to disappear. So that's the one we'll make today. I know that the crescent shape is very popular for these cookies. Who could resist something that's shaped like a mini croissant, right? For some fillings, it might work well, but not for the fillings that I use. The crescent shape causes too much of the filling to leak and burn, so I much prefer the log shape. Now that you know my strong rugel of use, let's do it. Put 142 grams of unbleached all-purpose flour into the food processor. Add 1.4 grams salt. That's half a teaspoon of diamond crystal kosher salt or a quarter teaspoon of table salt. For all the other salts, get a high precision scale and weigh. Add one teaspoon of granulated sugar and buzz for about 10 seconds to combine the dry ingredients. Add 113 grams of unsalted butter sliced into quarter inch pieces and 113 grams of cream cheese sliced a bit thicker because cream cheese is sticky and hard to slice. Make sure both the butter and the cream cheese are straight from the fridge. Pulse in one second intervals until the butter and cream cheese are completely broken up. This will take about 15 one second pulses. Just make sure your pulses are actually a second long, like one Mississippi, two Mississippi. <laughs> in the end, your mixture should look like fine couscous. Dump it into a bowl, squeeze with your hands until it clumps together. I know it looks completely crumbly and in the beginning this will look hopeless, but I promise it will stick together. It's like making a snowman. You start with a little bowl and then keep adding on to it until all the crumbs are in. Get your dough onto a work surface and form it into a rectangle. I start by pressing into the sides with a pastry scraper and then tapping it on each side to make a little brick. You want the dough to be roughly 5 inches by 3 inches, but accuracy is not very important here. Don't rush this step. If you end up with a sloppy rectangle, you'll end up with a sloppy log that won't bake evenly. If you encounter any sticking, sprinkle the counter with a bit of flour. Little cracks are totally fine, but you don't want whole chunks to be falling out of your dough. Wrap the dough tightly in plastic and repeat the whole process again to make a second rectangle of dough. If you have a food processor that is big enough, you can double everything and do it all in one go. But my 7-cup food processor can't handle that much dough. Put your dough into the fridge overnight or for at least 6 hours. Now let's prep the filling ingredients. We'll need the zest of one lemon and one orange. Although I would normally use a microplane zester, I think that coarse zest tastes better in rugula. So I suggest you either use a coarse zester or peel your fruit with a vegetable peeler and slice the peels into very fine strips. Whichever option you choose means the resulting strips very finely we'll need 160 grams of chopped raisins, both brown and golden work. The reason we're chopping them is so that they'll be more evenly distributed and it will be a lot easier to roll up the dough. 120 grams of walnuts. If you want, you can toast them before chopping, though I don't bother. <laughs> Mix 50 grams of granulated sugar with one teaspoon of cinnamon and we're ready to roll. Stand up each piece of dough on a floured work surface and cut in half. Each half will make one log. The dough will be stiff, so you'll need to press pretty hard. Keep checking that your pastry scraper is going in evenly. You want the two pieces to be roughly the same size. To make the butter more rollable and pliable without warming it up, press very firmly on your dough with a rolling pin in one inch intervals. Do this in both directions a few times. And then start rolling. 
make sure to add flour as needed to avoid sticking. Every few rolls, rotate the dough 90 degrees. This ensures you'll get an even rectangle in the end. Frequent rotation also catches sticking early on. If you rarely move the dough while rolling, you might get it glued to the counter. The shape we are going for is roughly 12 inches by 8 inches. Don't worry if the edges are somewhat cracked. Once we roll the dough up, it won't matter one bit. Make sure you're rolling through the edges. You don't want to have a thin inside and a thick outside. If your rectangle isn't even, you can always take a piece of dough from one place and add it to another place. Firmly press the patch dough in and then unstick the dough with your pastry scraper. Sprinkle a bit of flour on top and underneath and give it a little roll. As you finish rolling each piece, place it on a parchment paper lined baking sheet and put in the fridge. Then add the next piece on top and so on. Don't worry, they won't stick together. Once all the four pieces of dough are rolled out, place one on the work surface. Spread it with 80 grams of apricot preserves, leaving roughly three quarters of an inch border on all sides except for the one that's facing you. Sprinkle with a quarter of your raisins. If you want to weigh, that's 40 grams. The raisins are sticky, so do your best to spread them out evenly. If you get big clumps, Press on them with your fingers. Then a quarter of the walnuts, which is 30 grams. Then one tablespoon of cinnamon sugar. And finally, a quarter of the zest. Roll it all up away from you. Make sure to roll tightly, just like rolling up a sleeping bag. Press down on the edges. Trim them with a pastry scraper and crimp with a fork. Set this roll aside and repeat with all the remaining pieces of dough. Then brush them with milk and sprinkle with the remaining cinnamon sugar. I separated one of my logs because I had to keep it nut free for my son. So if you are baking for someone with a nut allergy, they are still good without nuts. Refrigerate on a parchment lined baking sheet for 30 minutes while preheating the oven to 350 Fahrenheit. Make halfway cuts in the dough in one inch intervals. Don't cut all the way through so that the filling doesn't ooze out too much. We'll finish cutting them after the bake. Place in the middle of the oven for 25 minutes. Rotate the pan 180 degrees and bake another 20 to 25 minutes or until the logs are nicely browned. Since my oven burns everything on the bottom, I shove another baking sheet underneath towards the end of baking for protection. But you might not need to do that. Let's see how they are doing. I think we're done! Cool in the pan on a rack for 30 minutes, then transfer to a cutting board and slice. It's totally normal for some filling to ooze out. Don't worry if it burns. Before slicing the cookies, you can trim all that goo with a knife. The hardest part is not to eat half of the batch right there and then. They are so insanely good warm. This dough is a dream. It's so tender and so flaky. This is more work than most cookies, but it's worth every minute. I think this might be even tastier than my apricot galette. And that's saying something. If any cookies survive more than a couple of hours, you can store them in an airtight container for a few days. Serve them at room temperature or rewarm at 350 Fahrenheit for five minutes. Happy holidays to all of you. I know it's been a tough year and I really hope the next one is better. Look at it this way. If we survive 2020, we can survive anything. Here are more culinary tutorials for you to check out and the link to my online classes is in the description below.